I think it's a really good topic. So, um, uh, personally, we're, we're kind of very interested, all of us, towards the commercialization of online video right through to potentially where we might end up in terms of social video. We are going to grab maybe half an hour of the panelists' time, ask them a few questions about what they do, what it is that they bring to the event, what it is that they bring to this area of expertise, and then we'll open it up for a few comments over the Twitter hashtag. So if you've got anything, Nikki's going to grab a few of those comments. It's hash SMC Melb, all one word. I'm sure you already know that. And... All right. Uh, and then, um, yeah, we can, we can ask those questions, which is probably going to be more valuable than just us ranting for a little while. So I'm going to grab my little stool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and kick things off by saying, um, I guess everybody got the invitation. We all know that where advertising is at on uh, online video at the moment is far trailing that of traditional platforms. We know that there is a massive discrepancy. I presented uh, to my board, which is Film Victoria, about a year ago now, and one of the things that we were talking about was that we firmly believe that the sustainability of these platforms is going to come when we start to see some of this balance in terms of uh, ad dollars <coughs> being spent on online platforms as well as uh, from traditional platforms. So we start to see that balance, and that, I think, for us anyway, is where that growth in that sector is going to come from, where the, where the content is going to be funded through. Now, at that point in time, 2009, the stats that I had were that even though content consumption was starting to shift online, where we still saw a nine times uh, spend per hour on traditional platforms compared to online. So there's nowhere near a balance in terms of the, the cost of this uh, ad spend. So what I might do, just opening up tonight, is throw it to Simon and say, why isn't it? Why isn't it balanced? And what's this kind of? What's the problem in this value value equation? Uh, thanks, Brad, and thanks for everyone for coming down tonight. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll give a little bit of a historical background. Uh, my company's portable. We established uh, over four years ago, and the impetus for that was the video iPod was released at the time. Isn't this cool? Let's do something with it. Why don't we come up with this film festival concept? It's going to be amazing. So out of that, I guess, came the Portable Film Festival. This was at the start of 2006, and call it heady enthusiasm or youthful ignorance. Um, it, 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 uh, it, it worked. It wasn't a terrible financial success, but it certainly wasn't a failure either. Um, I think a lot of the rationale for getting involved with that initially was that reading about how big the industry was going to become. Not that certainly that was an impetus to get involved, but it's like, well, this, this, this area is really going somewhere. In fact, actually, when I was on the phone uh, an hour or so ago, basically typing in online advertising, um, online video advertising, or well, video advertising, and the first one was a 2006 post that said, the industry is going to be worth billions of dollars by 2010, which I thought was slightly ironic, in lieu, I guess, of part of the discussion um, for tonight. I think what the process from, from our side is that we sort of went in there quite naively, I think, with a business model, thinking we will just be able to get views and through that people will then be able to get, um, will be able to sell advertising for content. Um, and then I guess from the perspective of how that festival worked is it had a lot of, um, uh, I guess, participation from filmmakers and look, that went really well. Like there's upwards you know, of a couple of thousand that we deal with and you know they're always looking for different ways, I guess, to monetize their content, but I guess just the amount of, even if you call it sharks, the amount of people that were just there going, oh, you guys are really, you know, onto something here, it's like, well, we'll see, we'll wait and see, and I think the proof's been in the pudding that, is, as Brad was saying before, the industry hasn't eventuated to that point. Obviously, there's a lot of interest there, there's a lot of people wanting to um, play within this space, but getting to your question that you asked, Brad, um, why do I think that it hasn't worked out? Well, I mean, doing a post on social media, writing a blog is a lot easier than putting together a bit of video content. And I guess video content, as you probably all know the stats, you know, nine out of the 10 videos on YouTube have been viewed less than is a thousand times or a hundred times anyway, not a huge amount of times, certainly less than you're going to be able to, to get a spend from advertisers. And you know, the actual amount of work needed to go in and put into a video can be considerable. Yes, you can do a video that's a bit on, uh, that's a bit easy to do, and invariably there's all the stuff for user-generated content, but I think is a reflection 
of the last three or four years, especially in advertising, we all know that that is fairly hit and miss. And whilst it's awesome to have the Old Spice commercial, that's cool because we know about it because that's the one that succeeded, not the tens of thousands of that didn't. And invariably, I'm sure all of us in this room have ones that have had an element of a viral video that certainly did everything but that, except maybe give you a virus. So um, I think um, it's a lot harder to play within the space. And I think something like when you look at, look at video for four or five years ago, I mean, this massive thing and people do like to get into it, it's so much harder to produce that than to say, I'm at Social Media Melbourne and here's a photo of Donald look cool. Like, that's a lot easier to do, it's a lot cheaper to do, um, and it's potentially also a lot more viral to do for the friends that are there. So, in answer to your question, I think that's probably one of the reasons that people have underestimated the need to do that. And I think also from an advertising perspective too, people have viewed online video, mobile video as like a cheap way for doing TVCs. And look, frankly, I think TVCs sort of like the recruitment industry. It's like one of those industries where you get big budgets because they just lobbied well at this outset. So TV commercials have really sort of worked on having fairly large budgets and invariably agencies and media buyers want to keep it that way. It makes sense, you know, it keeps money going through and so forth. So online video is really seen as like the cheaper option, even though in some ways it could be a lot more effective and a lot more cut through there. But we also, what we do know, is that, as you guys would all know, like what you can actually analyse online, you can know if something sinks or swim really quickly. Just because you put a TVC on Channel 9 and 10 on a Sunday night, you go, all these people watch. But at the end of the day, we all know that could be bullshit about how the actual engagement's there. Online, it's just so much more brutal. And I think, especially from a budgetary point of view, people have always sort of seen it as a cheaper option. And, you know, I, I would really question that model because I think ultimately it does come down to content. Invariably, that will come through for the rest of the discussion we have tonight. Thank you. Um, now, look, I think we should probably head over to Susie. Um, one of the things I'm interested to know is where we're at at the moment. I mean, we've, we've heard a lot of good stuff come out of the States recently. We know <coughs> 94 out of the top uh, 100 people through the ad age spend, uh, the top companies are actually spending on YouTube or, you know, on, against online video. So we're seeing enormous uptake from these huge blue chip companies. Are we seeing that in Australia too? Thank you. Um, certainly in Australia, I know we've just really started to focus on YouTube um, in the last year. Um, getting back to um, Simon's point in terms of why we aren't seeing the, the advertising dollars following the eyeballs, um, my view is it is a lack of education. Um, you know, as I'd just like to see a ray of, raise of hands actually. How many people work in offline media here? I think that was one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. We want your money. <laughs> I, think, I think this is great, and I love chatting to people who, who believe wholeheartedly in what we do, but certainly my view is, is that definitely um, at, at YouTube, and um, I've worked within a media agency as well, and the digital side, we're not getting into the conversation early enough. Uh, we're getting into the conversation once the ad dollars have been divided by the strategists and we're not getting in to talk to those strategists either. So I think, you know, it is an education process. Yes, the US are a lot further ahead than we are and uh, the YouTube homepage is sold out, I think, months in advance. Um, and we're seeing a, a great use of, um, of examples where brands aren't just putting the TVC up online, are really thinking about the content. Um, I, recommend you all to go and have a look at it. one of my favourite at the moment is youtube.com uh, forward slash Sienna. Um, it's a Toyota, has a Sienna car, it's a family wagon in the US. I don't even own a car and I'm certainly not going to own a family wagon anytime soon. <laughs> but I found that content um, hugely engaging. They had a 30 second TVC which then drove to YouTube. Um, at the end frame was go, go and visit more content on YouTube. It's a rapper that they got to do a comedy take. Um, there's a vast amount of content that they've produced on there and it also drives them through to the Toyota channel where you can download the MP3. So like Simon was saying, really thinking about that content, not just banging up a TVC. Um, so we are getting there, we, we're seeing that. Um, we're still a long way off and there's always stuff to learn. Go for it. Um, a couple of reasons why I don't think the advertising area has taken off yet is the majority of the content has been short form and it's also been a lean forward experience on your PCs um, and of course the infrastructure has been woeful in this country so there's not been that good a viewing experience which you know, helps both those things. 
but things are changing very, very rapidly, and we're seeing a lot of the broadcasters putting more longer form content on now because you are getting a more lean back experience uh, with, with your content, and the infrastructure is getting better. So I was just going to ask, from a, uh, from a YouTube perspective, then, are you seeing more success with the agencies that understand digital and go pure digital, or are you seeing more success from the agencies that are integrating that buy-in through, uh, I guess, a big traditional spend and some digital spend? Uh, I don't think it's a simple one or the other. I think, uh, you know, it's definitely where we get in earlier and, and talk to, if we get everyone sitting down in one room at the same time, whether that be creative, digital strategy, offline strategy, social media strategy. Um, I spent three years working at a media agency and uh, in the last year we actually integrated the digital team into the client teams, which I found was very successful in shifting perception and shifting dollars into the digital space. Um, and our view then was that there's not, there's not a social media strategy that sits over here and then there's a digital strategy that sits here. It should be all integrated and everyone talks to each other in one big happy family. Well, that would be nice. Yes. But I don't know whether that's going to happen. Um, so, Nikki, I was just going to ask, is it possible to advertise against live? I mean, it's hard enough to advertise against known inventory. Is it, is it possible to advertise against live at the moment? It's getting there. Um, so Viacorp have two parts of the business. One is a live streaming <coughs> business, which has traditionally been very corporate. It's been internal comms, corporate comms, but it's increasingly become very consumer and media driven. I'll give you some examples in a second. And the other side is the online video platform that we license out to large organizations to manage all their assets. With the live stuff, we've done some really cool stuff recently, um, which Simon's going to hate me in a minute because I should have put portable in front of the client. It was for Subi, the fashion label, where um, uh, uh, were uh, re relaunching themselves really, they had a few bad years and they had their comeback show at the Rosemount Fashion Week, is that what it's called? And on the, they were the last show and they put this massive event and we streamed it live into the Subi site, into the Rosemount Fashion Week site. But what was clever about it was that they syndicated those live streams to portals like Harper's Bazaar, Models Inc and a few others where they said here have the live content for free but in return give us a bit of your revenue split back from it. Now, I don't know how much money they made from it. That probably wasn't the point. To them, they were thrilled that they just got loads of PR on, uh, on the broadcast and free to air. Uh, we had 40,000 views live, and I can't remember how many it was on demand since. So they just generated a lot of brand, a lot of awareness, a lot of lead gen, and got some revenue out of it as well. So a little example like that that's happening with live.